Hi all, this is Deanna with Ferns Frills, and I wanted to um, let you know I'm. this is going to be a tutorial on how to make this boot um, from the template that I have on my blog. Now, um, I do have pictures of it, still pictures, at the end. So drop on down to about 22 minutes, and you can skip the tutorial. Okay. Hi, this is Deanna with Ferns Frills, and... I am going to show you how to use the boot template f to make the Victorian boot. For some reason, my uh, computer is just doing very weird things, and I cannot uh, get my documents to talk with my pictures, and it, it's creating a problem. So, um, when you get it, you're going to get a template that looks just like this. Um, it will have score lines where you're to score, and it'll have cutting lines where you're to cut, and it won't have the holes in there, because I figured you could decide if you wanted to put them in or not. Um, but this is how I do it, and I just thought I'd show you real quick. Um, this is not going to be decorated, because that would just take um, too long. But I will try to go ahead and finish it up, and then um, I'm trying really hard to find out how to do the fast forward thing. But for some reason, iMovie is just not letting me do that. So um, I would suggest if if you're going to put anything flat on here, okay? Like um, uh, later on this week, you will see a um, a boot that is actually going to be put it made into a skate um, for Christmas and when you do that um, you need to do that if you're if you're going to put in and I'm, go I'm going to emboss it um, with snowflakes so um, I would run this through your kettle bug big shot whatever and emboss it or do any stamping on there that you want to do if you want to cover it with um, pattern paper Anything like that, I would do it while it's flat. Okay, um, I know that kind of goes without saying, but just want to make sure that you know that. Okay, so we'll get started. The first thing that you um, you need to do is you need to go down the side here, and there is a line on the um, template, and you just cut to that line. I would say about. Mm, five different places about an inch apart is what I have done and that is going to give on just one of your templates now when you cut your template out you're going to cut it out mirror okay so this is the right side and this is the right side but they're going to go on like that so they are mirrored and you're going to have one tongue Okay, and on the edge of your tongue, right here, you're going to clip that also. And I clip those about every fourth of an inch. All the way to the line, if you guys sew, you know, same concept. It allows it to um, squash and go around that curve. You do it on both sides. So if you're just going to use the, the, um, the blank, boot, you just put it together just exactly like I'm going to show you. So, I use a uh, quick dry adhesive, um, the quick dry scotch. Um, you can use a glue gun, but it, it, it is a little bit hard to use because this is, it's so quick and it's hard to rub it flat. And if you've used your glue gun um, much, you know that you know it gets the lumps and bumps if you don't if you don't um, massage them out of there. So, yep, got that done. Um, so it's just hard. Okay. So on your template, you're going to have a line right here, and you cut on that line, and but you don't cut it through. You just cut to there. And then you're going just you're going to um, fold that. Now 
that's not real, real, real vital. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is going to be the mirror to that. Not going to be seen or anything like that. So the first thing that you do, in my opinion, it's the easiest to do this first. Okay, and just so you know where we're going with this, and then this is going to sit in there. Okay, so I take this and I put it back here because it's not exact. It's not like going all the way to the fold or anything like that. I take the um, the width of this that's at the narrowest point, and that's where you want to glue your two pieces together and it's a little bit just like that okay and that's going to form your width of your boot and you want to do this before you put on the back because it just makes life a lot easier in fact I will measure that for you and have that on the template okay so I'll have a little mark there that you put the other mark to that way you don't have to worry about that step Well, I thought I got this open. Let's do it one more time, shall we? Here we go again. And I have found, I don't know if you guys have done this or not, but a long time ago, Laura was um, using her glossy accents, and she'd put pin in the top and then and use it all the time, and then she noticed that it was getting all brown and yucko, and that is very true. It does. Um... And so I started experimenting, and I found the wires to your, um, like, anything, iron roses, you know, leaves, your, your little wild orchid crafts, anything that has the wire with the paper around it. If you leave those in there, they will not corrode. As long as the paper doesn't come off, you know, eventually, a couple months, it's going to, you know, it's going to get too wet, and it's going to come right off of there. Um, and then something in, especially the glossy accents, it um, reacts with the the glossy accents somehow, and it makes it discolor. But with the with this um, paper coating or whatever it is that they use on these, I really do think it's just paper. Um, it it doesn't allow it to get to the steel, so it doesn't react like that, and so it works fine. So I a lot of times I'll just put a little flower on top of there, and that's my lid. <laughs> But it works real good. I'm sure there's a more high-tech way of doing it, but, you know, if you don't have a high-tech way, I just slather it on there, take it off a little bit. It's no big deal. Okay. Make sure I got this right. Yep. Okay. We're going right to that mark. And it's not super critical, but it does make it a little bit nicer when you've got the mark. Okay. So you just glue it like that, hold it there for just a few, and it really, it, with quick dry, it is, it's quick dry. Very, very true. So you just do that. Now, what we're going to do, so if you saw the other, you saw that I had a seam down the back, and the reason for that, the seam binding, um, the reason for that is to cover these because these these little deals that you cut they it's hard to see on here these little things that you cut they are going to have to go on the outside so that you can see them and I would do them one at a time okay so we're going to go ahead and I would not score these okay you you're going to want to let them fold the way they want to fold. Does that make you, I don't know if that makes any sense. But this you're just going to, the one that's not cut, you're just going to bend around there. And you're going to bend the seam side into it. Okay? So it's going to be on the outside and then we're going to cover it up with a piece of seam binding. So I put my glue on 
the cut edge. Bend my other edge around. And the first one, of course, of anything is always the hardest. It's really not hard. It's just awkward sometimes. And this is the reason why hot glue is just, you burn yourself and it's just a bummer. So, you just put it on there. Hold it for a second to let it stick. See, that's all, that, that quick dry has already stuck good enough for this to be manipulated and everything. So, um, it really does do well. So, you just put a little dab on the next one. And you bend it over. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but when I bend this one over, it actually goes over the top of that, of this one. Um, and that's the reason for your, for your little tabs, because they're going to, as it falls where it wants to fall, it's going to either spread out or it's going to um, overlap itself so that it doesn't have wrinkles but it can actually do the curve because this is if you can see it's curved up like that so I really wanted it that way because otherwise it just looks I don't know doesn't look like a boot to me it's got to have that ankle part in there now this is what I'm talking about letting it kind of letting it decide where it's going to fold and where it's going to fall. And remember this is going to be covered up with your with your seam up the back. And actually um, the old old boots were just exactly like that. So see and that's already I, I don't see I like hot glue because of the instant gratification for like putting on flowers and stuff like that but stuff like this I mean this is pretty instant and I don't have to burn my fingers. Now this one actually spreads out. You can't see it. But it actually spreads out from the other um, piece rather than overlapping it because it's an inner curve. This curves down here curves out and here curves in and so it's going to spread away from the other piece. If you can see it there. Yeah, see. Okay. And this is, like I said, this is the reason why you don't really score this because you don't want a a ridge. You just want it to work. <laughs> okay. Now this top one, we're going to bend it over there, now see this time it did not meet perfectly, but if you will remember, the, um, prototype that I showed you, you don't have to worry about it. Can I actually just cut it off. See how it didn't match up there? Just psh, no big deal. Nobody in there ever, it's ever, 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 ever going to see it. Okay, we're going to cover it up and it's never going to be remembered again. But there you can already see it's coming together. Now, your paper is going to want to be massaged into a nice um, curve. You can, beforehand, you can um, rub it with something like, um, oh, what are those called? Embossing, you know. But I don't think it's necessary and I think it, it kind of makes it too much. So um, just take it, massage it around there, let it know that you want it to. Okay, so right now it wants to cave in right here. I want to tell it no. We want to scooch out right there. <laughs> okay, so that's the way it's going to be. Okay, so now we take 
I come. And I don't lace up the the holes beforehand or yeah, beforehand. I don't do that because it, it makes no sense to do it. But I do put on my um, eyelets usually. If I'm going to use eyelets, I'll put eyelets in there now. Um, some of them I put eyelets on, some of them I don't. If I'm going to cover it up with a rose or something, I don't bother to put um, an eyelet in there. This one is going to be a spring boot, and so I'm not going to worry about it. Again, this is going to bend around and come into there. Now this one you can bend over. I don't know that I would score it over. I would just kind of bend it over. Just kind of leaving it kind of like that. Don't think I, I, I know I wouldn't score it. I don't ever score it. Just, you just want it to bend over there like that because it's going to move and the, the fold is not going to stay exactly. Anytime you're, you, you're working with the rounded stuff, um, it's not going to stay where you right there. And you want the paper to be able to move and give as you go around your corner. So what's going to happen is this is going to get glued down right here and we're going to bend it around just like that. And all those little pieces in there as you bend it, oops, as you bend it, see how, I don't know, see how they all kind of fold into each other and they, yeah, they overlap and all that stuff and we just let them do their thing okay so that's what we're gonna do and on this one I just go ahead and put it on the whole thing because um, it's just too tedious to do each individual one and it will just like I just showed you it's going to do it okay line up your bottom edge and just push it down around that curve and hold it on the back it's 12.30 you do want it to come out flush right now it's not you know don't panic if it's not um, exactly because you're going to embellish this so all right again you flush up the bottom bend it around and a nice Real good little bend there. Hold it together until it's done. Also, the quick dry does not um, leave a um, terrible residue on it. So, even if you were just going to leave it out, you would be cool. But. That right there is all there is to it, my friends. It is not hard. It is very easy. What I normally do, oh, maybe I need a little bit more quick dry because it dried too quick there. What I normally do is sometimes I leave my tongue long, sometimes I will. Um, make it a little shorter and hang it out. That's the reason why I left you the option with the um, with the template to do e it either way that you'd like to do it. Um, either long or short. 
I mean, nobody's going to go around and measure your tongue and see if your boot is exactly right. So, um, but these are great to hold, like that little mini that I had. I'm actually going to make um, a flower arrangement to put in one of them. Probably, probably this one because it's going to be my spring one. So, it's going to go just like that. I round the corners of my tongue. Sometimes I take it out like that and just let it hang. Sometimes I make it a little shorter. It just depends on visually after I get my, after you get your, um, your lace. You're going to lace this up just like a shoe. It's a shoe. It's exactly what it is. So once you lace that up, that is going to pull those around and um, make them stay there. And then you leave the top ones open. And what I like to do is sometimes I leave them just up like this flat. Sometimes I'll pull them back this way and kind of make a, you know, pull it over there like that and put a button on there. Um, you can do anything with it. Hair on, it is done. That is the way you do it. And it's sturdy, it's not going nowhere. It's, um, it'll hold, like I said, like I showed in the other one, the book. I put real tall lace on mine. You don't have to. You're going to take a piece of, um, seam binding or ribbon, whatever you want to do. Um, I wouldn't put, I use the stretchy seam binding because it'll go around the curve and it'll actually make it look like a curve. So when you're doing this, see how there's that, like that little ridge there? You want to just kind of, just kind of work with it, work it out. And once you get your seam binding on there, never ever going to notice it. Okay. So... This is my little boot. The template's on my blog. It is at um, www.fernsfrills.blogspot.com, and I've got the link below. And they're just $3.99, so feel free. And like I said, I'm going to make a, a skate. Wouldn't that be cool? And I think it'll be cool to do roller skates. I'm going to make a roller skate one. First an ice skate, though, for Christmas. And I'm going to put two skates like they used to do, old-timey, and make it old-timey. But I think it'll, it'd be cool to just make it into a funky um, roller skate. And, I mean, you could. You could make it into any kind of funky boot, really. That is all there is to it, guys. You could tip up the things and make it a witch boot or whatever you wanted to do, whatever your little heart desires. So I hope that helped, and I hope you like it, and check out my blog. Thanks. Bye. You're growing up right before my eyes. I can't believe it, how time flies. You write your name, say your ABCs And dress yourself whenever you please You even call me on the phone To ask me when I'm coming home And on those nights I get in late There's still a chance Yeah.
tiptoe down the hall I think I hear an angel call Daddy, come give me kisses and hugs Tell me I'm the one you love When you tuck me in real warm and snug Daddy, don't forget my kisses and Kisses and hugs